Hey everybody, Cold Marine here. So we're gonna work on uh, a new tool, all right? Well, it's not, it's new to me, maybe not new to some of you, but it's called the Midi Twister, the Little Twister, or the Twister Tool. And it's how to make um, these right here, pinwheels, easier, all right? Um, I'm, I'm kind of the labor intensive guy. I like doing pinwheels. They're my wife's favorite and I kind of enjoy making them. But I saw this and I was like, man, that's got to be cool to use. So to start it off, all right, you got to start off with this. All right, you got to put, so right here I have some five inch squares put together. This is a five inch square charm pack that we have in the store. And some yardage we put around here. Um, what's the name? I forget the name of this yardage. But anyway, this is what you got to do. Okay, so with the five inch, the, the, the description of the fabrics will be in below, okay? So with the five inch squares, you got to have a three inch border. So the border is important. You have to have specific uh, 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 measurements in the in the border because you're going to be cutting your, um, when you cut your, your, uh, your uh, pinwheels out, okay? It's gonna be using portion of the border to help you shape what you're getting in the pinwheel, okay? Now, it's also important to kind of have a pattern or a set way of putting your five, your squares together. You can go fives with the mini. I mean, they have all kinds of sizes. Um, tens, I have one that I'm working on now with the 10 inch. Um, we haven't cut it up yet, but I just got this together. And we'll be using this for the 10 inch twister, okay? But the border is very specific, okay? So you couldn't have, you know, the three inch border on a 10 inch, on the 10 inch, all right? The 10 inch has a six and a half inch border. You have to, you have to pay attention to that because the border is very important when you're making your pinwheels, okay? So you have to pre-start, all right? When you get your tool, all right, and you get your fabric, you gotta put this together first. And then you're just gonna cut it apart, all right, using the tool, okay? So the tool that we're gonna be using is the little twister. This is it right here. This is what it looks like. I hope you can see that. Let's put it against here so you can see it. That's what it looks like, okay? Down here, you see that? No? All right, let's put it on the, let's put it on the table. That's the tool. And you can see how it has the intersection in it, right? That's purposely built so that when you put the intersection on the intersection of your fabric and you cut around it, 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 it creates your pinwheels for you, okay? So, you know, the thing is, you're just going to have to put this together first. So let's pull this down. Yeah. All right, I'm going to lay it out. Let's go, let's start here. Let's do it this way, okay? We'll start from here. Okay, so you're gonna need your rotary cutter, nice sharp rotary cutter, okay? And something that I learned also too is you're gonna wanna be precise with your cut when, when around the edges. Meaning you don't wanna go long, extra long, all right? You don't wanna go extra long, okay? You wanna kinda be precise. Because you're going to be needing that material next to you for the next block when you create your pinwheels. Okay, I learned that lesson. I made that mistake, so that's so that you don't have to. Okay, let me make the mistakes. I can afford it a little bit. She's my wife shaking her head. No, I can't afford it. But let me make the mistakes. You get the point. Okay. So look. All right. So let's start it off. So just like this. See how I got my my little twister. I'm just going to put it right here intersection just remember intersection stitch line stitch line that's an intersection okay i'm gonna put that on there and we're gonna cut but we have to be very precise with our cut we don't want to go further than we need to when we're cutting because we're going to be using the material all around that okay okay so let's cut this all right let's cut the very first square now for me when i'm using this tool okay like like Jenny, because I saw Jenny had made one of these. You know, my mind doesn't work in that kind of way. So I have to keep everything in order, okay? I'm a potato head, and potato heads have to keep things simple, okay? So let's cut this very first one. And the thing that I love about this um this tool as well, 
is that it has legs on it and the legs are slip resistant. So you don't need much pressure, pressure, I'm sorry. Just cut away, okay? All right. So see what I mean by you have to be exact? Because sometimes you'll have that, you know, when it just hitches up on itself because I wasn't exact. All right. So this is the very first cut, right? So I'm gonna put my very first cut on the board because I'll lose my position, I'll lose my mind if I don't know where I'm going. So let's put this one on the board. Remember how we cut it, right? It was like that when we cut it, okay? Let's cut another one. All right, so we're just going to the next intersection. All right, you see how, now you see how the lines account for that distance. Look at that distance right there. Now, if I had to run really, really long over, see how I went over? I even went over on that one, and I almost went into this block. So that's why you have to be careful with your cuts, okay? So let's cut this one out. Now, using a, um, a rotating... Um, Cutting mat would probably help, but I love to torture myself, okay? That's why I'm contorting to all kinds of angles and stuff. Here's the second cut. And, and if I had dropped this on the floor, if my puppy had got hold to it, I can remember where I was because I'm keeping this in the, in the best shape as possible. This is the next cut, okay? Let's take the next cut over. This is right here, right? All right, so you're not gonna see the real formation of the pinwheel until you come into the second row, okay? So let's let's just cut the second row for right now so we can see where we're going with this, okay? Intersection, all right, line in line. We're gonna cut, okay? These things are really fun. I like I like these things. Let's pull that. All right, so we're gonna put this underneath the, the, the next one. We're gonna go to the board, we'll put it to the next one. And remember this was the other cut, right? This goes here. Okay, and then the next cut will fit in here. Next intersection, remember. <laughs> I'm kind of going out of order here, but I'm only going out of order to show you how it's created, okay? Go across. Go up. Let's go up here again. Make sure that cut is made. We'll pull this out. Look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? That's the first one. All right. So look, we're going to go across. I'm going to keep going across, all the way across. We're going to build it up. Now, the thing is, when you start off with this framework, it's going to shrink down significantly, a lot, okay? Um, so be be ready for that. No matter how big you make it, it's going to shrink down, and you know that. But new cultures may not know that, so this may be a new feature for you. But if you pick this up, you you let out lay out your your framework and you start cutting. Just be ready; it's going to shrink down a lot, okay. And then once it shrinks down, it's going to shrink down again because you still have to attach everything, okay. Remember, the quarter inch seam is going to rip that down even further, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep on cutting here, and then we'll come back when I get this top row down. We'll come back and uh, we'll take a look at it, okay. All right. So <laughs> here we go. We got a couple of rows on here. See how it's coming out. All right, so I probably could have did a little bit better when it came to putting coordinating the colors, but it's kind of like an illusion a little bit, all right? And, you know, once we get done adding the rest of them, we're going to add the rest of them, then we'll come back and take a look, and we'll see what it looks like, okay? So I was just, I really just wanted to 
show you how the tool was used and also that you know depending on what you want to do with what your colors have what colors you have or what pattern you want to lay out is what you're going to get when it comes out to the pattern on your uh, your pinwheels but the tool is really great i love the tool and it's fun to use you know you get lost in it so now i know if i want to make you know uh five inch pinwheels i'm going to get a super huge you know a super huge print uh i mean layout first and then i'll cut it down because you know i like big quilts so this is not a big quilt at all but probably great for a table runner or something like that but in order to make a nice pinwheel, maybe a pinwheel raining or something like that, then I know I'm gonna have to go really, really big because it's gonna cut down into small, okay? So let's take a look at what we have on the table. Okay, so this is what, we, what we're left with, all right? Great for scraps. For me, this is right up my alley, okay? Uh, somebody else may say that's a lot of waste, but for me, this is right up my alley. I could throw that in my scrap bin and use it later to build some uh, emotional blocks, but you know, this is the pattern in which we used. So this is how we're going with it, okay? Intersection, and we cut, that's it. That's simple. As you listen to my dogs wrestling in the background, to the board and you know once the first one's laid out it just guides you all the way the rest of the way you're not on your own okay it doesn't leave you hanging out there you, you can fill it in all right another thing it teaches you to you know have good seams and um a good sharp blade okay you don't want to be torturing yourself with a dull blade 45 millimeter, even a 60 millimeter is okay. This, the blade is what's important, okay? Have a good, clean, sharp blade so that your cuts are easy and the material picks up easily. Bam, look at that, that's pretty cool. I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill that out, finish it up. We'll take a look at it when I'm done and then we'll, we'll, re, we'll close it up and that'll be done, really. All right. So when we come back, it'll we'll have all of our blocks cut out and on the wall. Okay, guys. So we're back. So this is it. Done. Completed. Almost. All right. We still gotta stitch together our our little cuts or our little cutouts. Okay. But you know, I'm just gonna grab it by four. You know, put it together. Grab it by four. Put it together. And then put it back. So you're going to have even more shrinkage in this. Not, not bad, right? It's a great tool to use to keep you creating. And what can you say about that? I mean, there's, there's nothing else you could say about this tool. The little twister. Great tool to make pinwheels. If you're stuck around pinwheels or you want to make them in this fashion, great tool to get. Where can you get it? quiltmarine.com. So this is what we used, all right? We used this tool. We used this pack, sorry. And our yardage right here, magic white multi. That was the border. Pretty cool for three items, right? That's not bad. And then you get this. Or if you're even more creative, you know, make the pattern in your own way, all right? Okay, so I want to come back and make sure you saw what it looked like completed, okay? We had it laid out with just, you know, without putting our stitching together. But now here we are, shrunken down. Man, this, this thing shrunk down a lot, okay? But if you're a new quilter and you want to knock out some, some pinwheels and you don't want to torture yourself, I mean, it's not hard, really. I mean, let's be honest here. Doing pinwheels is really fun. I mean, I mean, you need to be to spread, spread out your uh, your skill set. But here's a tool that you can use to make your skill set to bring your skill set together, right? Um, with this tool, the little the the little twister, some yardage, 
and this little charm pack right here, a 42 piece. Now we also carry the 100 piece, which would probably come together pretty good. But um, the reason why I didn't use it, because I went big, I want, I want to see what a 10 inch would look like. But I think a 100 piece would probably be pretty huge. I mean, you'll, it'll, you'll pattern out 100 piece, five inch squares, but remember, it's gonna shrink down. But this is what you get. I mean, I like this. It's a fun tool. It's great to use. I mean, um, I think what I'm gonna do probably is put together a quilt where, uh, I mean, using this tool with a nice pattern where I really pay attention to what pattern I'm using when I put my uh, squares together, you know, some kind of dark to light or light to dark fade or something like that. I mean, th I mean the options are incredible. They're numerous and you can get wild with it. But this is it, all right? Um, I definitely want to go bigger. You guys know I don't do small. Small quilts are not my thing, all right? I'll probably, we'll probably back this. We'll probably practice my FMQ on it. You know, I need surfaces to start practicing my FMQ, and this would be a great surface to do my FMQ on. But anyway, that's it, all right? Um, little twister. That's for five inches. And charm pack some yardage, and this is what you get. Remember, it's only a quilt. And also remember, it's only fabric and it's only thread. Thanks for watching, please subscribe.